Welcome back. We'll continue our focus on the postponed elections and uh, the attendance matters that are coming up uh, as a result of that. Well, this morning uh, we have uh, Mr. Ide Iguabo, who is the publisher of uh, the Fund National Interest Paper. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, my brother. Well, it's uh, something that it just keeps unfolding. Uh, the developments after that. Yes, we do know. INEC has addressed stakeholders. They've given certain things that need to be done before the big Saturday now, which everybody is looking forward to. But we've seen reactions too from political parties. The PDP is scheduled to have their own emergency meeting uh, today, hoping to respond to perhaps what the APC did yesterday. But from your impression, uh, from what you've seen concerning first the postponement and how the steps that are being taken leading us to the Saturday, do you think we're on course? Um, thank you very much. Um, there's so much to say about this development. But let me first begin with, INEC has never conducted the, the current headship of INEC. They haven't conducted any national elections before. This is their very first. And so people tend to forget that Conducting state elections, Anambra, Edo, Oshu, uh, Kitty, is not the same ball game. I think that INEC have they have not been given a fair hearing mm -hmm. in this particular development. How do you mean? Uh, a fair hearing in the sense that look, yes, they were preparing for uh, general elections, which they knew what day it was. Uh, they were they were always saying they were ready, everything was okay, they had the finance and so on and so and so forth. But having never conducted an election before and faced with the monumental challenges on the eve of this election, they had to do what they had to do. Having said that, uh, I don't want to, to begin to prevaricate, but the truth of the matter in this case is simply that our politicians have not made INEX job easy at all. When before or afterwards? Before, now, and even I can predict tomorrow. How do you mean before? See, the, the politicians have to agree that elections have come to stay and that in putting themselves forward for elections, they have to just be guided by some kind of code of conduct. Yeah, but what did they, that suggests that they play the role in the postponement of elections. It is not that they play the role in the postponement of the elections, but okay, Let's take everything holistically. Right. Look at Rivers. Look at Zamfara. Look at several other issues that are still pending in court. I think even up till yesterday or the day before, one, one, can, one candidate was being asked by a court to vacate that he wasn't the right candidate yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying to you, what did the elections held on Saturday? Well, that's hypothetical because you didn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying. That, that's gone. <laughs> okay, but that's gone. The truth is, gentlemen, what is even more absurd in this matter is the reaction of the politicians themselves. Elections cannot hold tomorrow. Yeah, everybody was in shock. Yeah, but we have to move but, on. A new date has been set. Yeah, but you know, the thing about that is this. Much as, yes, uh, a new date has been set, elections didn't hold, but what raises concern for, let me say, uh, the electorate now? Politicians have different ways that they react to these things. Nigerians will ask, have we gotten to the point where we have learned lessons from this such that haven't seen what happened in uh, 211 uh, and now, uh, in fact, 215 and now. Does it come across to you as though we have learned the right lessons such that we won't see these kind of circumstances again? 
It doesn't seem so at all. I mean, look at the last Olympic Games, for instance. Nigeria came back home without a medal. But the next Olympic Games is next year. Have you seen any sign that what we are going to perform at the Olympic Games next year will be anything different from the previous four years? It's four years. We have a penchant for mediocrity. We, 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 in fact, people are beginning to ask me, are you sure uh, the head of INEC is a professor? And I say he's a professor, but he's not a born INEC chairman. He's not born, he's not a professor of INEC affairs. For me, the way to go about these things is pretty simple. Which is? Take INEC of limelight. Let them do their job the way other electoral bodies do their jobs in civilized countries. And how can that happen? It can happen if, for instance, they are on first line charge. If funding does not become a politicized matter for them. But funding is not an issue today. It I is like not an issue, not but it is part of the problem. But he didn't say now, so. Now, let me tell you. In reacting to this whole development yesterday, I was shocked to hear what the president had to say. Mm. Yeah, but, but before that particular one, let me just say this. When you say uh, INEC and then we have a penchant for mediocrity, but you know, there are very fantastic world-class companies in this country. Absolutely. And they're doing their jobs yeah. without let or hindrance, mm. the system notwithstanding. Mm. So have we properly diagnosed what the issues are or are we just seem to be making excuses for INEC? Because INEC themselves said we have to have a conversation about election management in this country. Mm -hmm. That suggests that beyond INEC performing their functions, they are attending their other bodies that have to play certain roles. So if INEC is the one saddled with this responsibility as the capacity of the voters is increasing on the list, INEC may increasingly face these challenges if we don't address the question of whether or not INEC should be the only body saddled with this responsibility. Yeah, um, I have heard that suggestion recently that maybe INEC should be um, uh, broken up into several organs <coughs> and have all of the independent organs do specific jobs, like registration, like continuous voters' education, and so on, instead of, but we run a federal system. And as you know, the problems that we have in this country that are inherent in that federal system apparently are the same problems that exist in INEC. So for me, I'm saying, in point of fact, unburdening INEC might prove fatal. Because you just find that, is it a zonal thing that you are going to do? Is it a departmental thing that you are going to do? Mm -hmm. Or would it, how would you want to? That, that's, that's perhaps also talking about um, all kinds of um, restructuring, you know, and all of that. But let me ask you this. Do you think we have a template for our elections? I ask that against the backdrop of the fact that in the Second Republic, for instance, um, the FEDECO, the Federal Exe Electoral Commission at the time, had their own buses. And we even named the, the buses FEDECO and, you know, stuff like that. So, it, but of course, that uh, republic didn't last beyond four years. Now we have had 20 years of electoral uh, experience, of, of democratic experience. Do we have elect, a, 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 an election template? If not, when? That, that, is, that is one of the uh, sore points of how we find ourselves where we find. Even if it was just the last two elections, 2011, postponement, 2015, postponement, that was enough to begin to say, look, let's address X, Y, Z, and ensure 
that long before the elections arrive, we are ready. Mm. It is unfortunate. I won't say we have a template. If we had a template, there won't be a postponement. I know you have another point to make, uh, which I uh, hope don't lose your thought, but having to do with election management and unbundling INEC, it may have legal implications, but who knows?